Welcome to this technical corner today. We're talking about additive manufacturing. I'm with Barry Rooney from uh, Prima Power. Um, Barry, fair to say that most people will know Prima, um, Prima Power for obviously their sheet metal solutions, but this is Prima Additive. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's about 3D printing. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Prima Additive basically has been born out of Prima Power. Um, of course, uh, 3D printing is using laser technology, and that's basically where it's a good Prima marriage, Power started. It? It's a perfect marriage, yes. Mm. Um, so basically what we're doing now is using our laser technology for additive manufacturing. A completely different market in a lot of senses. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about the, the different types of additive machines that you supply. Okay, so we do both types of technology. We do powder bed fusion, uh, which is basically where you've got a bed of powder and you're firing the laser to create the pattern um, and then building the layers up, um, which then leaves you with a build volume with a part inside it. You shake the powder out and then you've got your finished part. With the uh, laser metal deposition technology that we do on the other machines, that's a different process whereby we are using a laser head and firing laser powder at the focal point onto the part that we're building and thereby creating the part using this, this process of firing the, uh, the powder at it instead. Now we'll take two, um, both examples or both machine types. The second one, you can actually use existing machine bases and constructions, can't you? Yeah, yeah. So with the laser metal deposition, because the technology is centered around the head rather than the, the process itself, it basically means that we can put that type of head onto our existing 3D lasers. Um, so we can generally apply that to our laser dime products, which are the machines that are used predominantly more in the aerospace industry, uh, high um, And why would you accuracy. need to do that? Why would you do that? What would you be doing? Repairing something? Would you be building it into the process? Generally speaking, and then you're, you're adding to on those types of machinery. It's not to say that you can't do it in terms of a build from scratch. But generally speaking, something like this, for example, might have started life as a tube and we're adding these fins using that type of technology. Um, so repair or adding to, complementing an existing very expensive part. And that's why we have these two different machine types where we'll put it on the laser dime, which is a smaller volume type machine, but a very, very accurate, very precise machine because it's designed for energy and for aerospace, those sorts of industries. We can also then put it onto the very large format machines, for example, the LaserNex 2141, which is a two meter by four meter by one meter machine. We can still use the same technology for repairing and building upon large parts, large expensive parts, uh, using this type of technology. Um, it's, it's clear to me in industry, a lot of 3D printing is about the, um, is about the guidance. It's about you know, working with someone to create a part, to create a mm -hmm. solution. We, we talked earlier about the fact that parts, we, you're trying to make them lightweight. You're trying to keep, put cooling channels in them and things yeah. that you develop a component in accordance with what's best for it, as mm -hmm. opposed to thinking, I've got to machine it. Don't yes, you? yeah, absolutely. And then you've got that expertise as well as the hardware to be able to support people on that, have yeah, you? Yeah, of course. So the machines are only part of the requirement here. Um, we have, because we've got the Prima Additive Division, we've got experts there that are able to sit down and work with a customer to determine how best to approach the process. So it's not just about the part design, it's what is that part actually going to do? What are its structural characteristics? What's its performance characteristic? Does it need to be lightweight? So for example, with some parts, for example, with that one, it might not be possible to machine that like that, especially with these sort of channels running around it here. Um, with additive manufacturing, because you are basically firing a powder and fusing it together where you want it and not where you don't want it, you can create a lightweight part, take a lot of structure and weight out of the part, uh, and make it very, very uh, easy and um, put all of the characteristics you want in it from a performance point of view, but take everything out that you don't want. And you can't do that with certain machining processes. And what about the materials though? Because that, that's important. What can you print? So basically, your, your real limitation is only more to do with what you can get as a powder uh, and a powder that responds well to laser processing. Um, so for, you know, there's a very, very wide range of materials that can be done. We can use mild steel, we can use stainless, we can use nickel alloys, aluminium, uh, even copper alloys. So you know, a very, very large range of materials can be processed using um, laser printing, 3D and printing. I mean, there's got to be a costing exercise done though, hasn't there at some point, and I'm assuming you can assist with that, where yeah. you would take a part and you go, do you know what? It's actually better to 
machine it, it's better to print it, and these are the reasons, because if the yeah. costs don't work, then yeah. it's no and good. And that, that's where the consulting approach comes into it, because we will sit down with the customer and work out exactly what it is they need to do and how it's going to cost how much it's going to cost to do that because you've got a completely different type of technology you're using less materials you could potentially be using less energy in building it but you may have a slower production time depending on the size and the nature of the part and and do you think this that prima additive is is the next step on for prima power as well then it is a good combination of two companies that can now offer such a diverse offering from sheet metal cutting, bending, punching, and all the rest of it through to printing now. Yeah, absolutely. We, we find that, uh, of course, as we, 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 we spread across such a large range of different customer profiles and industries um, that we do get asked for this sort of technology. But of course, there are other industries that we're not in at the moment where this technology equally benefits. Um, and bearing in mind that some of those are complementary industries to where we already are, it's a perfect synergy for us. It's something else that we can easily step into. And let's take it as a group. Um, there is lots of competition for everybody in, in the manufacturing sector, but you're quite, you're very broad, aren't mm -hmm. you? I mean, we, we've spoke today and there's plenty of other technical corners on our channel or coming to our channel about uh, laser cutting, about bending and punching. Do you have competition that, that cover the, the breadth of solutions that you do or would you say that you're, you you stand out in a lot of senses on your own to be able to do all these things well? Yeah, I mean, our product portfolio is probably the largest there is. Um, Prima is a very, very large company. It's a very large global company. Um, the It's owned by the Prima Industry Group, so we've got a lot of subsidiaries that do a lot of different technologies. Um, so, you know, from the point of view of our overall product portfolio, I don't think there's any direct competitor that's got as many different products um, and the other thing is that of course every product has got its own specialization so we've got lots of different products but it's not like we're all spread very thin because we have specialists that understand every single type of technology that we do good stuff and this is additive manufacturing uh, prima additive we'll put the contact details on the screen if you're looking at um, solutions in the uh, in the printing arena on of course materials that barry's mentioned um, such a cross-section of of materials that you can print these days thank you very much barry very informative thank you mm -hmm.